Good morning, good people, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Taos. We hope that y'all find here this morning a welcome worthy of the call that we've received in Jesus Christ to welcome friends and neighbors and strangers and neighbors from all across the world. Um, we're glad that you're here with us this week. Uh, let's see, any announcements this morning? I will let y'all know. I know it seems like I was just on vacation uh, because I was, but this is what happens when you cancel all your plans for the first half of the year because of COVID is you end up with a lot of vacation time. Um, so next week, y'all are gonna get a treat. My friend, Frank, uh, Frank Yates, he's a retired pastor in Albuquerque is going to supply preach for you all. Uh, so if you have an emergency, feel free to be in touch, but otherwise you'll be in good hands and then I'll be back after that. I'm going to open us up to gallery view. Are there any other announcements this morning? Feel free to raise your hand or just unmute yourself. We got Joan. All right, Joan, you're unmuted. Okay, just a, a request, a reminder that we still need some people to help with the meal for the men's shelter on the 27th. So we're looking for a main dish a starch, uh, bread and beverages, and the breakfast items. Excellent. Thank you, Joan. Uh -huh. Any other announcements? We're two screens this morning, so I'm flipping around. I don't see any. Um, are there, you know, we have this practice and in, when we meet in person, are there any visitors who would like to introduce themselves? It's certainly not required, uh, but if you'd like to say who you are and where you're coming from, we're thrilled to, for visitors or first timers, newcomers, we're thrilled to welcome you. Well, we're thrilled that you are all here. And if you're on Facebook, as always, drop a note and say that you're, let us, let us know that you're with us so we can greet you. Uh, we welcome Nancy, Sandra, Randy, Laura, my parents, Jim and Sandy and all, all, all others who may be joining us by Facebook and everyone who's joining us later on YouTube. We're thrilled that y'all are here. Uh, Mark Jackson is, we, we had a little comedy of errors. So Mark Jackson's liturgist again this week. So if there's no other announcements, then I'll turn it over to him for the call to worship. Welcome all of you. This is the call to worship. Children of God, come to the waters. We gather to be restored and renewed. Come with your faith and your doubt. We respond to the one who claims and calls us. Come, Christ summons us to draw near. Let us worship God with joy and thanksgiving. Our opening hymn is Eternal Father, Strong to Save. It's in the purple hymnal number eight and the blue hymnal 562. Join me in singing this. Oh, 
call to confession. We worship a God of grace who catches us when we fall and teaches us to grow in faith. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin together. Lord, we long to draw close to you, but we are afraid. We are afraid to heed your summons, for we do not know what awaits us when we step out in faith. We are wary of taking risks for your sake because the forces of chaos seem stronger than your assurances to us. We worry that we will not have enough faith in you or in the gifts you've given us to do the things you ask. Forgive us, Lord, and save us. Reach out your hand and lift us up from our fear that we might follow you faithfully. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Friends, hear the good news. When we are in fear, when we are in sin, God comes, Jesus reaches out and catches us. All of us who are in Christ are a new creation, which means that whatever you're feeling this morning, you can set it down. You're forgiven. Wherever you've been, whatever you've done, whatever fear or grief or shame holds you back, set that down and let it go. You've already been forgiven. And wherever you go, wherever we go, we go with God. And we will be always forgiven in the waters of baptism and in the love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. for illumination. God of shining splendor, your voice makes the earth tremble in wonder. Overshadow us with your spirit so that we may hear your word and live as faithful disciples and covenant people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Kings 19, 1 Kings 19, 9 through 18. So bear with me here. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the Lord, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord and the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with a sword. I am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind 
so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He, he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken our covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, when you, arrive, when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king or Aram. Also, you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, and Abelmoholah as a prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Yahu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I, yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. The psalm reading is Psalm 85. 8 through 13. Psalm 85. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, and his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet righteousness, and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and he will make a path for his steps. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to put the link to Mark's recorded solo in the comment section, both on Facebook and on uh, Zoom right here, just so if y'all want to see it, and it will be emailed out later. Take it away, Mark. The glory, great things he has done. So long and the world that he gave us his son. Feel that his life an atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But more and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 
Lord, let me hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, to Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Thank you, Mark and Dan. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Hear what God's spirit is saying to God's church. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward the disciples on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him saying to him, you a little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ, praise to you, O Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Likely we've heard this story before. It is, after all, one of Jesus's greatest hits. The disciples are in a boat by themselves when a storm blows up and they are sore afraid. Jesus comes to them walking on the water and the disciples are amazed. Peter wants to walk on the water too, so he climbs out of the boat and is able to take a few steps, but he gets scared and he starts to sink. Jesus catches him, carries him back to the boat, and suddenly the storm stops. Moral of the story, Jesus is amazing, and Peter needs more faith, right? Well, maybe. That's one reading, but there's much more going on in this story. Matthew writes his gospel in language of allegory and symbolism of the Hebrew people. And so readings that would be obvious to his first readers can often get lost on us. So I'd like to step back and take a look at three particular aspects of this story 
that say more than our 21st century ears may initially pick up on. The boat, the sea, and the faith. First, the boat. For the gospel writers and for early Christians, a boat was a symbol for the church. It's the ark of salvation away through the waters, a reminder that Jesus's first disciples were ordinary working class fishermen. And the gospels are full of stories like this one of boats traversing perilous stormy waters. Matthew wants to make it clear to the Christian community that following Jesus will not be easy, that there will be hard times, struggles within, dangers from without, that the church may be the ark of salvation, but let no one walking in the way of Christ think that we are in for smooth sailing. Second, there's the sea. In the ancient Hebrew cosmology, the sea is the symbol of chaos, destruction, and the powers of darkness. We heard that in our opening hymn this morning. If you look at the text of Eternal Father, strong to save the chaos of the sea. In Genesis 1, God moves over the primordial waters of chaos and tames them into the order of creation. A few chapters later in Genesis, when humanity falls into wickedness, God unleashes the floodwaters to destroy everything and start over. In the story of the Exodus, the Lord saves the Hebrew people by parting the waters and leading them out of Egypt safe on dry ground, while the waters close back over Pharaoh and his army and destroy their enemies. For the Hebrew people, God is sovereign over the waters and all forces of destruction. But the waters are always there, just beyond our reach. A simple storm can toss us from the safety of the boat into the certain death of the sea. But Jesus, Jesus comes to his disciples walking on the water. Jesus has the power to calm stormy seas, which says to Matthew's readers and to us that Jesus is indeed Lord, even over the powers of chaos and destruction. The church will face times of darkness and turbulent waters, yes, but we need not be afraid because Jesus is Lord. And Jesus comes to us even and especially in the darkness and chaos of the storm. And finally, there's the faith, Peter's faith to be specific. When Jesus catches Peter, he says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Often we assume that Jesus is scolding Peter for not believing, but what if that's not it at all? Just a few chapters later in this same gospel, Jesus tells his disciples that if they have little faith, faith even the size of a mustard seed, then they have the power to move mountains. For Jesus, a little faith may be just enough. What if Jesus is not chastising Peter, but is in fact encouraging him? After all, Jesus never questions Peter's decision to get out of the boat. Did you notice that? He doesn't ask him, oh, you of little faith, why did you think that you could walk on water? But rather, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt that you could?
for Matthew's first readers, the story said this. The church will face troubles. But Jesus is Lord even over the powers of destruction. And the little faith we have may just be enough. In many times and in many places, preachers, myself included, have preached on this text as a story of what we might encounter on our Christian journey or what we will encounter someday in the future when things get hard. But these days, I think it's a story about us. I think this is a story about right now. After all, we know that we, Christ's disciples, the church, have been forced out of the boat. We literally cannot gather at the church or gather anywhere that mat for that matter in groups larger than five. The world, the society, the lives that we known have, have known have been suddenly and unceremoniously overturned. Our boats have been smashed to pieces on the shore and we are having to traverse choppy waters without the institutions and the systems upon which we have always relied. If we open our Bibles and look for ourselves in this gospel story, we are the disciples right in the middle of the storm. Chaos and destruction surround us on all sides. But church, here's the incredible thing. We are not sinking. Have you noticed that? Contrary to all logic and expectations, we've lost the boat, but we're not going under. Even without our church building, we're still finding ways to gather and worship God. Even without the institution as we've known it, we're still connecting with one another, caring for one another, praying for one another. We're still giving our time and our money to the church and to our community. We're still finding ways to feed the hungry, house the homeless, welcome the immigrants, provide for the children, care for the sick, and honor God's creation. The boat has been pulled out from under us. So many things that we thought we needed have disappeared from our lives. But the miracle is that we're finding we can walk on water, or at least that we know how to swim. Our little faith is turning out to be just enough. We of little faith, why did we doubt? Years ago, the Reverend Ernest Campbell, then the pastor of the Riverside Church in New York City, preached a sermon with the following challenge. He said to his listeners, the reason we seem to lack faith in our time is that we are not doing anything that requires it. I think he's got a point. No one tries to walk on the water when there's dry land in sight. But friends, what Reverend Campbell said, I don't think that's the case anymore. The reality and maybe, dare I say it, the blessing of these COVID times is that we have been forced out of the boat. 
And while we're treading water, while we're blown by the wind and pounded by the waves, we are discovering that we are creative and adaptable and resilient. And we're discovering that even in these waters, we are not alone. After all, what saves Peter in the end is not his newfound ability to walk on water. That gets him a few steps out of the boat. But Peter is saved in this story because when he starts to sink, Jesus is there to catch him. Jesus who is Lord and Jesus who is with us even when the storms are raging. Our faith and our resilience are indeed gifts of God and they are best cultivated in times of trial, in times like right now. But the purpose of faith is not to get us all the way to the shore. No, like Peter, we have just enough faith to lead us back to Jesus. Jesus catches Peter. Jesus catches us. We are not our own salvation and neither despite what any preacher might try to tell you, is the boat that calls itself the church. Our sure foundation is this and this alone, the God revealed in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to that God. Amen. Our next hymn, oh, I pulled up the wrong document because that's a thing that we do in COVID times in church. Our next hymn is The Church's One Foundation in your purple glory to God hymnal. It's number 321 in the blue hymnal. It's number 442. If you don't have a hymnal and are joining us, feel free to just Google the hymn, The Church's One Foundation on your device. If you want the words, it'll pop right up. So Mark, I'm asking to unmute you and there you are. Let's sing. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. She is his God creation by water and the word. From him he came and sought her, the his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, our cake, one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace in you. Though with a scornful wonder this world sees her oppressed, by schism red asunder, by heresy distressed, yet saints their watch are giving, their cry goes up along, and soon the night of Shall be the morn of song. Mid toil and 
and tribulation and tumult of her war. She waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Filled with a vision glorious, a longing I God bless. And the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth has union with God the three and one. And mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. Oh, happy ones and holy. Lord, give us grace that we, like them, the meek and lowly, may live eternally. Friends, we belong to God and are built on the sure foundation of Christ. We live in Christ's peace and we move and have our being in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us share that peace with one another. I'm gonna put us on gallery view for just a moment and invite everyone to unmute themselves and share the peace of Christ with one another. If you're on Facebook, feel free to share the peace of Christ as well. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. And also with you. So with you. So with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. What's peace, everyone? Peace. We're two screens this morning on Zoom, so don't forget to hit the arrows on the left and right and see everybody. I don't leave anyone out. I invite you to take a look around at this screen, at these smiling faces and names, and choose someone that might be might, someone maybe you haven't talked to for a little bit, and to look at them, give them a call this week, send them a message, check in with them in a safe and distanced manner, uh, and share Christ's peace, ask how they're doing. And just a reminder, we forget as Presbyterians, you know, we can pray on the phone with one another. Uh, there's nothing against that. It, it's a little bit awkward and you can't see each other, but give it a shot. It's kind of fun. Having shared Christ's peace, let us now bow our hearts and minds in prayer. We'll have a portion of the prayer where we lift up the joys and concerns on our own hearts. And if you are joining us on Facebook, I invite you to leave your prayer requests in the comment section now. There's a little bit of lag time and it's helpful to get those early. I'll read those aloud when we receive them. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, Lord of all creation, sure foundation of the church and of all of our lives. We come to you in prayer and in gratitude this morning. God, we thank you for the church, for one another, for the other disciples in the boat with us, for the people with whom we walk our Christian journey. We thank you for the gift of the church and for the resilience and faith that you have given us in this time. We pray for our whole church family, for all people around the world, seeking to be faithful for all people of faith who seek to walk in a spiritual path. God, we pray for your world, the world that you have created and called good. We pray as it groans under the pains of climate change that you would teach us to walk lightly on your, on your earth and to preserve your promises for future generations. God, we pray for all nations and for our own nation, for a Congress that cannot come to a decision, for a president that does not seem able to look beyond his own well-being. 
God, we pray that all people and all leaders in this nation and beyond would work together to serve your people across partisan lines and to build up the health and well being of the world. We pray for those who are unemployed. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are furloughed or in any way affected by this virus and by the other difficulties of life that we encounter. God, we lift up your people. We pray for those known to us, for our loved ones. We pray for those who are grieving, who have lost family and friends in recent times. For those who are hungry or homeless, for those who are sick and for those who've been injured. We pray for all people living in fear, struggling with hard decisions, for those who are separated from their loved ones. We pray for all people who need your comfort and peace this day. And God, now we lift up aloud and in the silence of our hearts, the joys and the concerns that we hold this morning. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray? We would pray for all who are facing serious illness and for us this week with great gladness for a, an outstandingly good report from Arnie and for her cancer treatments and ask for your mercies uh, for all who are engaged in, in health care. God, in your mercy, hear up. our prayers. Thanksgiving. Thank you, Dave and Marnie. I see Joan is unmuted. Yeah, just prayers for our next door neighbor who is now recovering from bypass surgery. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For who and what else do we pray this morning? I see Julia. I need to ask to unmute you. There we go. Oh, well, the, can you hear me? Yeah, the boss has sent me another case in which the op opposing party is a certifiably crazy person. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. And I, I need to ask for your prayers for this certifiably crazy person. Also, for the person that uh, I talked about last week, or not we last week, but earlier, the one who had broken down during a trial. He's still going. These people are wounded. They need to be pulled out of the sea. God, in your mercy. In our, our prayers. prayers. I see Cliff and Libby. For the teachers and the children who are getting ready to go back to school, as I understand, they're going to start out one day a week in online, I mean, no, on, in person, and then the rest of the time online. And it's a scary, concerning situation for all. Mm. God, in your mercy. Your, your prayers. prayers. I offer up prayers for Dulce Romero, member of this church, mother to Joanne Ortiz, who is 97 years old and uh, Joanne fears is losing some hope and stamina in these times. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We continue to pray for recovery and health and comfort and peace for Deidre Hughes's father and continue to pray for healing, for 
healthy grief uh, for Amy Jo and her family and Colin, the death of Amy Jo's beloved mother. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I pray for my friend, Andrew Black. Some of y'all in this congregation know him. He's supply preached before the, the Wildlife Federation guy or the trout fishing guy, if you remember that. Um, for him and his wife, Jen, and their newborn daughter, Brooke. Uh, she's had she's a high risk birth uh, and they've just been rushed back to the hospital uh, little Brooke stopped breathing. Andrew was able to give her CPR, uh, but she's tested positive for COVID and is in the hospital. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I don't see anything else on Facebook. Are there other prayers and concerns? All right, I see Julia again. Gotta unmute you again. Yes. Let's pray for our brother, Steve Daniels. I haven't heard a lot from him recently. Prayers for Steve Daniels, who uh, makes my life better every day. We have been in touch, so that's Good. joyful news. God, in your mercy. You're our prayer. Our prayers. And for the people of Beirut, who are suffering through this horrible tragedy this past week and all the tumultuous violence going on now inside the country as people claim a future for themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, in your mercy, our hear our prayers. I lift up prayers for all those whose lives and well-being hang in the balance of uh, the legislation that's currently tied up in our nation um, for all who are hungry right now and struggling to pay bills and who are unemployed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray all these things, O oh God, words spoken and words unspoken. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God has given us and has blessed us with so much, with one another, with this community, with the good gifts of the earth that sustain us. And so we return our gifts to God. You all have been we all have been exceedingly generous in giving to the church and in giving to the community during this time. So let us take a moment, moment to give back to God to uh, write a check or give online if that's how, write a check to the church or give online if that's how you give. putting the link in the comment section on Facebook and on Zoom. And also to think of a way that you can be involved in serving this, this week and being in this community. Uh, Joan has given you some easy ones. If you cook, the men's shelter needs a few more pieces. And so feel free to do that. Shared Table is also looking not only for food, but for egg cartons and plastic bags as they work with the farmer's market. So having given of ourselves to God, I'm gonna go back to Mark, ask to unmute him and 
See if we can sing a song of doxology of praise to our God. Are you going to do a minute of mission at all? Oh, you know, there is a minute for mission. Thank you. Uh, really? Joan, would you like to, is that, would you like to speak to that? All right, let's do that. Okay, probably one of the, something that many of you aren't aware of is that we now have a little free pantry out in front of our church. And um, the church has chosen to adopt that as one of our mission projects. It um, is part of um, Taos um, Alliance, Immigration Alliance, Immigrant Alliance, and uh, Los Cumbres Nurture Center uh, with Sienna Sanderson. But we'll be keeping that little area nice and neat and tidy and try to keep some food in the pantry. It's uh, set up so that if you have food to give, you can please tuck it right in there. And if you need some food, you're welcome to take some food. So it has to be non-perishable. It has to be um, not expired. And of course the package can never have been opened. So um, any kind of packaged food or even uh, personal hygiene supplies are welcome. Um, when on the first Sunday of the month, when we have one of the mission people sitting in our church parking lot to collect shared table food, you're also welcome to drop things off for our little free pantry or um, that we can keep in supply, or you can feel free to just tuck it in our little free pantry. Thank you, Joan. Uh, this is a great opportunity to, to give. Uh, and I'll tell you an amusing story, which is that in another little free pantry, uh, apparently two cooked chickens were placed in there. Uh, so we appreciate the thought, but uh, emphasis on the non-perishable. If you have a cooked chicken, take it to the men's shelter. I'm sure they would love to eat it. All right, thank you for setting me straight, Mark. Uh, now, now let's sing a doxology and I'll let you say the prayer this week. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Christ of people here below, praise Holy Spirit evermore, praise Triune God whom we adore, Amen. Dear God of mercy and love, bless these gifts of generosity given by your people for the work of the people and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is Give to the Wind Thy Fears. In the purple hymnal, it's number 815. In the blue hymnal, it's number 286. Or again, just Google Give to the Wind Thy Fears if you want to sing along. Mark and Dan, take it away. Give to the winds thy fears, open the honest grave. God hears the sighs and counts the tears, God shall lift up thy head through waves and clouds and storms. God gently clears the way, wait patiently, so shall this might soon be the joyous day, lead to God's sovereign sway, to choose and to command, so shall thou on me. Amen. Friends, you belong to God. Belong to Jesus Christ, the one who comes to us on the waters, even when the sea is stormy. So go forth this week 
to be the church. Yes, the sea's rocky. Yes, the boat's been pulled out from under us. But we have faith, even a little faith. Therefore, we can do great things. Go forth to feed the hungry, to help the homeless, to care for the sick, to tend to the grieving, to love and serve the Lord in every way you can. Go forth knowing that you can walk on and swim in the water because you are resilient people of God. And when we falter and fall, which we always will, that Christ is there to catch us. Go forth to love and serve, and as you go, may joy and nothing less find you on the way. May you be blessed, and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified, risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. Rocking the boat here. <laughs> <laughs>